that's what's more fun for me. I spent most of my life as a Ledger was now big news internationally. He had cool, cred and box office bang for your buck. He also had an artist's temperament, which cultivated an air of allure and mystery about him. His relationship with Heather Graham had turned him into tabloid fodder, and his new relationship with Naomi Watts, Oscar nominated for 21 Grams, brought him a great deal of unwanted attention. But fame was not what Heath was after. Again, wanting to challenge himself and test his ability, he followed Ned Kelly with offbeat, quirky roles in The Lords of Dogtown and The Brothers Grimm, notable mostly for the fact it was Ledger's first pairing with Terry Gilliam, which had Heath in raptures. Certainly, the time we're spending between action and cut it is fantastic. And I'm loving the people I'm working with. And, and I'm having the time of my life, I really am. Then came the film that changed everything for Heath, both personally and professionally, Brokeback Mountain. On the surface, the film appeared to be about a forbidden gay love affair, but the movie really concerned the living of lies. I was just truly fascinated by this character, who was a highly complex person uh, with so very little on page to express this complexity. It had to be done in stillness and in silence. Playing opposite Heath was Jake Gyllenhaal. The pair hit it off on set, something both actors appreciated given the personal nature of the material. I don't know what it is. He's just a, he does, he makes me feel comfortable, you know? Like, he makes me want to be present, and um, that's, I think, the best thing you can ask for in somebody who you're working with. Given the religious climate in middle America, Ledger and Gyllenhaal were taking a huge risk and deserved the accolades they received. Both actors were nominated for Oscars for their performances, as was their co-star Michelle Williams, who was, by now, romantically involved with Heath. Life imitated art, when on set the pair fell for each other. They later had a daughter, Matilda Rose, with Jake Gyllenhaal taking on godfather duties. Heath said that becoming a father exceeded all his expectations and was the most remarkable experience of his life. With star status and many film accolades, you would assume Heath would ooze self-confidence. However, when cast in a particular role, his insecurities often took hold and he would question his acting capabilities. It's, it's a pattern of mine going into any film that once I get or win the role, I uh, instantly believe that I shouldn't be doing it, I can't do it, and that I fooled them, and, um, and I, I try and find a way out, um, which I did on this. Um, but my agent, he's, uh, he's onto it, you know, he, he recognises it as a pattern, and I do now too. You know, I understand it's a necessary part of um, me and, and, and the way I wrangle myself into concentrating and focusing on, you know, on the job and trying to do my best, is essentially trying to, to defeat myself and my own anxieties. Following the acclaim he received for Brokeback Mountain, Heath was definitely on Hollywood's A-list. But instead of taking on huge blockbusters, Heath chose to go back to his roots, returning to Australia to play a tortured heroin addict in Candy, and then co-starred with fellow Aussie Kate Blanchett, playing one of six aspects of Bob Dylan in I'm Not There. It was sometime in 2007 that Heath and Michelle broke up, devastating the actor. There were whispers that despite his obvious devotion to his daughter, he was still maintaining a party lifestyle, something that Michelle didn't want Matilda exposed to. Thankfully, he had a heavy work schedule lined up. He also now had the pick of projects and was able to balance his career with projects like I'm Not There and the blockbusters like his next pick, playing the Joker in the latest retelling of Batman. I met with Heath and um, he really seemed to relate to what I was talking about. He seemed to understand how this character could be extraordinarily frightening and fresh and, and different than, than anything that had been done before. Heath holed himself up in a London hotel and worked on his dark interpretation of the Joker, which after viewing his genuinely sinister presence in the final cut, gives some light into the headspace he must have been in at the time. His Joker was a twitching sociopath wearing threadbare duds and his face smeared in cake makeup. After wrapping The Dark Knight, Heath had admitted to an English rag that he was having trouble sleeping, yet he kept up his schedule to appear again for Terry Gilliam in the Imaginarium of Dr. Panassas. 
It was on the morning of January 22nd that Australia learned that Heath Ledger had passed away. He was found dead in his Manhattan apartment with no suspicious circumstances. It wasn't just the film world who grieved. The entire world was shocked at the passing of an outstanding talent taken far too soon. Immediately there were stories insinuating suicide. Rumours circulated about Heath's supposed depression over his separation from Michelle and Matilda and his difficulty in sleeping. However, the New York Medical Examiner ruled that Ledger had died of an accidental overdose of prescription pills. Production on Heath's latest film shut down and many thought it would never be finished. I just gave up when he died. I just thought, that's it, it's over. Johnny Depp, Colin Farrell and Jude Law all volunteered to take Ledger's role in finishing the film, all dedicating their paychecks to little Matilda Rose Ledger to ensure her financial future was secure. When Oscar time came around, Heath was posthumously nominated and won the Best Supporting Actor Academy Award for his role in The Dark Knight. His mum, dad and big sister Kate all accepted on his behalf. I think when we were making the movie that everybody was watching Heath uh, do something spectacular, we were in on it we knew that something special was taking place. I'll let Terry Gilliam sum up the professional feeling felt for Ledger, not only on awards night, but his legacy left behind for his daughter to discover. One of the most phenomenal actors I've ever worked with. Utterly phenomenal. I mean, anything you throw at him, he would just grab it and turn it into something even more wonderful. There was something so instinctive about his, his acting. And it's just joy, it's joy in acting. It wasn't like some people would get all neurotic and everything. No, he would just leap into there. He would energize everybody. Heath Ledger's passing at 28 years old robbed the world of film and theatre performances from an outstanding actor. Considered one of the most promising actors of his generation, his performances in Brokeback Mountain and The Dark Knight had already proven he had what it takes to become one of the greats. Much like his friend and one of the readers at his memorial service, Kate Blanchett. We will miss him not only for the man he was, but for an outstanding talent who still had so much more to give. Stay tuned to Star Picks for all of the movies you know and the actors you love. Find us or follow us at Facebook, Twitter or at mnc.tv. For more of the best in entertainment news, check out your movie network channels. It's all together better, on screen and at mnc.tv.